see how close I have to stand. Ooh, not close at all, all right. Um, conservation and endangered species can be a tough subject. Too many statistics and it feels like a lecture. Too many grim stories makes activism seem hopeless. With a light tone that never dismisses the importance of their topic, Arthur Martin Jenkins and artist Vicki White have created a delightful work that demonstrates why creatures like the petula snail are as important to save as the majestic tiger. Can We Save the Tiger highlights humanity's role in both conservation and destruction, but always concludes with a hopeful note that if we act, we can change our intertwined fates. I am delighted to present a 2011 Boston Globe Horn Book Honor uh, Book Award for nonfiction to Can We Save the Tiger, published by Candlewick, edited in America by Andrea Tampa, illustrated by Vicki White, written by Martin Jenkins. Andrea Tampa will be accepting for Vicki White. For Vicki White. Well, I'm going to go first. But anyway, I'm here. Well, Vicky's not here. This is for Martin This is Jenkins. for me. I'm not Vicky White. <laughs> and actually, that's not Vicky White either. I'm going to go first so that actually Andrew now has to furiously cross things out on the acceptance speech of Vicky, where we repeat ourselves. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to talk really very much about conservation. I'm going to talk about books, and also to say that it's, it's a genuine honour to be honoured here tonight. And if I didn't think so, then I wouldn't have flown over from London yesterday and, more importantly, braved Junction 17 of the Massachusetts Turnpike. Thank you, <laughs> Phil. <coughs> and then tried to negotiate our way from Newton to Somerville this morning. <laughs> Recalculating. <laughs> turn <right. laughs> so, having said that, I want to thank you all again for honouring our book. And I use the word our in the larger sense because really what I want to talk about tonight is the fact that producing the kinds of books that we produce, and I think any sort of book, is a collective endeavour. It's actually a piece of teamwork. And astute observers will see from the programme that three of the books tonight come from one stable, which is not bad going, but even more significant, two of those books, both the books in the non-fiction category, actually come originate in one stall in that stable in London. So they were both edited by Lucy Ingrams and designed by Ben Norland. And that's a pretty good outcome, I would say, for all the books published in this country in this year. Uh, and editors and designers are the people that we like to kind of pretend don't exist some of the time. But without them, uh, these books would not exist. And what I really want to say, I think, is that none of us knows where this whole business is going. Anybody who deals with books must be perhaps just deep down a tiny bit anxious or at least intrigued as to where we're all going to be in 20 or 30 years' time. But um, perhaps the most important thing that we have to think about is how we can find ways of ensuring that that kind of collaborative effort can go on. Because we can write things that we think are reasonably good until somebody comes along and tries to cross them all out. Although I have to say that Lucy is one of the few editors that I've ever worked with uh, who's encouraged me to put more words in sometimes rather than fewer, which Ben has then, of course, being a designer, trying to get rid of his ambition, I think, is <laughs> to have a non-fiction book with no words in it at all. <laughs> we will succeed one day. But... Um, Without them and without the whole apparatus that goes around producing books, I'm not sure where exactly we'll go in the future. And I think that what we produce these days is good and I think is a source of celebration. And I think we have to hold on to that um, and just think as imaginatively as we can about how we can go on doing that. And that's all I've got to say, really. Thank you. Thank you.
and I'm going to read Vicky's remarks. So many of the amazing opportunities that have come my way have arisen far more by accident than by design. It was one afternoon back in 2005 that I found myself feeling rather out of my depth in the London Walker Books office after having been invited in due to a case of good old-fashioned mistaken identity. At the time, I knew next to nothing about children's book illustration, but despite looking through my portfolio and determining that I definitely wasn't the person she had in mind, editor Lucy Ingrams asked me whether I might instead be interested in embarking on a project more suited to my obvious interests, primates. And so, Ape was born, and with it a fantastic new working relationship with Lucy, adventurous designer Ben Norland, and the immensely knowledgeable zoologist and author Martin Jenkins, whose company I believe you have the pleasure of tonight, and whose tales of travel and adventure are so worth hearing. Ask him about his leech encounter in the jungles of Malaysia. <laughs> Can We Save the Tiger is the second book to have emerged from such fortuitous beginnings. Martin's skill in striking just the right balance between realism and optimism, responsibility and accusation, and objectivity and compassion when writing about wildlife conservation for young children is second to none. Ben's fearlessly playful imagination was, as always, vital in bringing the whole book together visually, and to Lucy should surely go the credit for piloting such a varied crew. Her passion, vision, and unwavering sense of, of direction brought everything together to form a coherent whole. My own childlike wonderment with animals and my desire to spark similar curiosity in other people, young or old, is the fundamental reason I draw and paint. If in some small way I've played a part in achieving that objective, then I feel both privileged and inspired to have done so. So huge, huge thanks to the Boston Globe Hornbook Award Committee for recognizing Can We Save the Tiger, a tiny drop in a vast ocean in such a prestigious way. As for the question that forms the title of the book itself, a few weeks ago, I stumbled across a quote by essayist Sidney Smith that took the answer right out of my mouth. It is the greatest of all mistakes to do nothing because you can only do a little. Do what you can. The window of opportunity where tigers and all the other extraordinary animals with which we share the planet are concerned is, after all, still open. Thank you.